In this lesson, I want to look at factors to help reduce cost. So in the last lesson, we looked at, well, things that influence the cost. Now, what can I do to try and reduce it? So let's look at some of the things that make us pay money. So the number of instances we're actually using. So here, a great way to reduce that cost is, well, I want to use auto scale. Make sure we're using technologies that let us do auto scale. This could be virtual machine scale sets. If it's Azure Kubernetes services, there are capabilities there for the cluster auto scaler and the horizontal pod auto scaler for the number of container instances we have. App service plans, they have auto scale capabilities. But also, if I can, well, let's use serverless. Serverless really helps us optimize that spend. So if we can think about shifting from IaaS to PaaS as much as possible. Make sure we use the right SKU type. Remember, we think about that ratio of things like CPU to memory. Understand the resource our work is doing and is it using more CPU, is it using memory, and make sure we pick the correct SKU so we're not wasting resource. Make sure when we're not using something, we deallocate. So deallocate when it's not in use. If I have a test dev environment, shut things down at night. There are things to help me. Virtual machines, for example, have an auto shutdown capability built in. I can say, hey, at 7 p.m. every night, shut this down. So we can help us save the money. Delete resources. We're not required. If I'm finished with a certain project or test, delete it. This is why putting things in a resource group together that make up a certain service not only helps me with the lifecycle management of provisioning and running and policy and RBAC and budget, when it's finished, I don't accidentally leave things behind. Hey, I delete the VM, but I forget to delete the disk. And the disk might be a greater cost if I'm using premium disks, for example, than the compute itself. So make sure we delete things when it's no longer required. If tiers are available for a service, use it. So when we think about, hey, this tiering, think about storage, remember. Remember we have that idea of, well, we can have hot, we can have cool, I can have archive. Use those. Remember there are things like lifecycle management and it will automatically move things between them based on the interactions, be it modification or access. So I'm doing the most optimal. Because remember, with storage, yes, I pay for the amount used, but I also pay for interactions, i.e. transactions. And so there might be a better balance. If it's data I need to keep online, but I'm not really accessing, well, that's more cost efficient to store in cool because I pay less for the capacity, but more for the transactions, but I'm not gonna be doing many transactions. So that's a, a good idea. Get to PaaS as much as I can. I kind of talked about that already. Make sure I can always identify who owns a resource. In the old days of virtual machines on premises, you had this VM sprawl. You had a ton of VMs and you had no idea who owned them and you had no idea what they were used for. So you were too afraid to actually delete them for fear of breaking the planet. So when I'm thinking about my cloud estate, make sure I can always identify what business unit owns these resources. Are they test? Are they production? What is the cost center? So a thing to really help me drive and be successful with that is use tags. This helps me with that identification. So I never have some resource and I'm like, what is this used for? Who owns this? Make them have tags. I can use policy to enforce them, remember, so I can always tell what something is being used for. And also look at things like, remember, Azure Advisor. Azure 
Azure Advisor gives you those nice recommendations around many different things. But one of them is, hey, my cost optimization. So go and take a look at that. Now, they're all things I can do that impact the cost of the resources running in Azure. But there are other things I can do as well. If we think about, hey, is something running and how many instances I have? Well, there might be over a period of time, there's a flaw. There's a flaw of an amount of resource I am always using. So if I was to think about time and let's just say amount. This could be in terms of the amount of storage, could be the amount of database consumption, it could be number of VM cores, whatever that might be. And this time could be daily, could be weekly, annually, there's some seasonality. But the key point is the usage maybe varies a little bit over time. But there's some base amount that you are always using. Let's just, I'll draw a line here as an example. I'm always using that amount. There's something called Azure Reservations. And what this enables us to do is we can essentially commit. I'm gonna commit for typically a one or three year term, I'm gonna use this amount and pay for that amount, even if I slightly drop below, and I get a really big discount. And it, it is a really big discount. So what this is now saying, it's a billing mechanism. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna to commit to use this amount of resource for the next one or three year term. And then that amount of resource you're gonna bill me for, whether I'm using it or not, which is why we kinda of wanna pick a floor, the minimum we're ever gonna use, so we're not wasting money. But then for that amount, you're gonna give me a huge discount. The amount I use over that, I'll pay the regular pay as you go rate. And we can see this, if I jump over for a second, and this is the pricing calculator, which we're gonna come back to. But for right now, I'm just gonna add a virtual machine. Now a virtual machine is not the only type. There are many different types of resource we can use this with. Storage, databases, huge number of services I can use this for. But the key point of this is, let's just say, for example, I always knew I was gonna use 10 of these virtual machines. So let's just say 10 there. And what I see then is a price. You can see, well, that's gonna cost me over here on the right-hand side, let's just say $1,500 for simplicity. But notice I have this option here of pay as you go, the regular rate, or I get these huge discounts if I'm willing to commit to some minimum amount that I'm gonna use for one or three years. So if I know I'm gonna need 10 of these VMs and I actually get some flexibility in the sizes, if I say, hey, I'm gonna know I'm gonna use these for three years, suddenly my bill becomes $1,000. So I get a huge saving off of the compute charge. Now it's a 57% discount on the compute side and there's something else that goes into that. To make this even easier to understand, I'm gonna pick an operating system for a second where there is no licensing component. So it's $854 a month for 10 of them. So now if I apply that three year, suddenly it's $370. So you can see reserved instances essentially let me get a huge discount if I am willing to say, hey yeah, I know I'm gonna use that amount of resource for a certain period of time. So once you've started to use Azure and you get a good feeling for the amount of resource you're using, using Azure reservations is really gonna help you get a big saving. So this is one thing helps us save money. Now the other thing that may be, I may not just be brand new in the cloud. I may have been using Azure on-premises and I had existing licensing. So I was on-prem and maybe I had Windows licensing, maybe I had SQL licensing, maybe even it was other types of things like Red Hat or SUSE. 
what I can actually do is I can bring those licenses for use in Azure. And this is all around the idea of hybrid use benefit, i.e. you've already got some licenses, they're covered as part of some software assurance or whatever the agreement is there, you can bring those to Azure, so I don't have to pay for the license in Azure as well, which is a component of the cost. So if we go back to that pricing calculator, and now we'll understand why that Windows one look, looked a little bit funny. So Windows includes the cost of a Windows Server license in that VM price. So my pay-as-you-go, notice it says license included. I'm paying for pay-as-you-go license. But if I already had licenses available, I can say, hey, yeah, Azure Hybrid Benefit, I've got that as part of my agreement. Look at the cost. The cost suddenly goes down big time to the same as what a Linux VM was. And now I could combine that with Azure reservations as well. So now I'm down to $370 a month. So I've gone from 1,525 down to 370 by committing to using some level for a three year term. And I had existing licenses that I'm gonna to bring to the cloud. So using those things together is super, super powerful. Now, one final thing. I might have workloads that I need to get some piece of work done, but it can be interrupted and it's resumable. Because when I think about Azure, well, Azure has a huge amount of spare capacity. If you consider that I as a customer at any time can come along and create hundreds of virtual CPU cores, when I do that, create, I don't sit there and wait two weeks for Microsoft to order a server for someone to rack it and connect it and install an OS. No, when I think about Azure, there's a huge amount of spare capacity. Well, no one likes to have capacity just wasted if we can get some money for it. And so what we can do as the customer, there's a concept called spot VMs. And a spot VM is basically super cheap. It's very cheap, but it's cheaper because it's using that spare capacity. And I, as the customer, basically say, look, I'm willing to pay um, up to some amount of money. If the price goes above that because demand increases, they'll deallocate my virtual machine. Or no matter what the price, if on-demand customers need it and they're short of capacity, I'm willing to have my workload stopped. So I use this if my workload can be stopped, like some sort of batch job, and it is resumable. So I can restart it from the point it was stopped and I've lost all that progress. So if I have some workload that meets those criteria, I can get super, super cheap capacity. And we can see that if I actually pop over to the portal for a second, and if I go and create a virtual machine, but I can use other things on spot VMs like virtual machine scale set, AKS node pools. If I say I wanna create a VM, and what I'll just do is I'll leave it as East US, but I'm gonna say here, hey look, I want this to be an Azure spot instance. Now I'm gonna change it from that to a D2. And what it's gonna now say is look, how do you wanna do this? Do you wanna set a max price or you're willing to pay up to the max price, but you're still lower priority? And I can see a history. And this is showing me how the price has varied over the last three months. And you can see it's super cheap. And it's also showing me things like, well, what's the chance of it being evicted? So 10 to 15% over 20% in a nearby region, East US too. And I can see the average price you pay over that period of time. And what we can see here is, well actually Canada barely ever gets evicted, zero to 5% and it's cheaper. So obviously they have a lot more spare capacity and they don't tend to have the same pressure. So that helps me pick, well actually maybe then I'll create it in a different region 
because I don't really care where it runs, I just need it to run, and I've got a less chance of it being evicted. And so spot VMs can really help me optimize my cost by taking advantage of that spare capacity. So definitely, if you have a workload that can be stopped and then can be resumed when the capacity is available again, definitely consider spot VM. So lots of things we can do to actually help reduce and optimize our costs.